Tis time for the Minnesota Renaissance Festival. Weekends in Labor Day, August 19th to October 1st. Gates open at 9 a.m. daily. Discount tickets online and at Walgreens, Super America, Cub, Menards, and Whole Foods. Visit renaissancefest.com for more. And whose team is this? Is this your team? Or is this your daddy's team? Thanks for listening to the Dad Mode Podcast. Common sense parenting in a politically correct world. Here's your host... Andy Carlson. Welcome back to the Dad Mode Podcast, Common Sense Parenting in Politically Correct World. I'm your host, Andy Carlson, at Andy Carlson Show on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all of that stuff. I'm a father. I have no idea what I'm doing, but you and either they're chiefy, so try and learn something together today. Website is dadmopod.com. Tweet at the show. At Dadmopod, like us on Facebook, do all of that stuff. Uh, man, I- exciting stuff going on. Uh, happy weekend out there, one and all. I'm recording this on a Friday afternoon, and it, it, it's going to be fun. The wife and I took each took a half day. Yeah, we, we like doing that maybe once every six weeks, every other month, something like that. And Muggsy's taking a nap right now, getting her batteries fully charged. And we're going to go to the zoo or... Uh, if it's raining, we're going to go to the Children's Museum or something like that. It's going to be a good time. Yeah. And I always like doing this, especially towards the end of the week, because, um, you know, like we talked about in the last episode, making time and football season, the schedule is just jam packed. I'm working days, working nights, working weekends, all of that stuff, just, you know, cranking out content. Uh, Purple for the Win, uh, 1500 ESPN, all, all that other stuff. And also the. Yeah, so it, it is tough to spend just time with, with the kids. So I'm excited. Hopefully uh, the sun stays out and we're going to ride the hell out of some carousels and it's going to be some good time. Because, you know, the the zoo, love having a membership to the zoo. We, we live close to it. And so we, we put it to good use. And every time you go there... And there's something a little bit different. And you can always tell the difference between the people with the memberships and the people who go like once every other year. Yeah, because the latter has to stop at every exhibit. And then the former's like, oh, yeah, yeah, just a, just another tiger. Yeah, just just another black bear. All right, uh, we're out here. Deuces. Yeah. Uh, but today I want to talk about, so Muggsy is growing up. Uh, I know that's a shocker. It's very, yeah, here's what I want to know. When I die or when Muggsy gets older she can go back and listen to these uh, I imagine so if iTunes and iHeart are still a thing in the year 2036 or whatever and yeah I wonder what she'll think if she'll be impressed with dad's thundering voice or she'll be like you're so stupid he made me wear those princess outfits even though that's what she wanted to wear yeah uh, but she she's at the age now where she she's getting tall enough and rambunctious enough where she's very curious about everything. So she's able to open doors, reach on top of countertops, on tables, uh, open and close drawers, and and all this stuff. And it it, it can become it's an interesting age, right? Because there it, it's cool because you're watching them, um, you know, form words and sentences and and uh, interact with other kids and almost become like a small human being as opposed to uh, just a babbling, drooling, crawling baby. You know, it's that nice little transition phase in in the toddler part. And it's funny, like they they learn words and, you know, they have crutch words. Like right now hers is, uh, oh no, or where'd Margaret go? And then pretend to hide. And then, oh, she loves to jump. Yeah, and I, I don't know if this is good or bad, uh, but one of our favorite things to do is jump on our bed. So, and, and it's our, our, our bed is weird because we have a we don't have a box spring. We got a beautiful Lisa mattress from our friends over at Lisa Sleep, and it you, you don't have a box spring with it. You have something called a bunkie board, which is like a three quarter inch plywood uh, that just goes underneath the you know, the mattress. We have a queen size one, so it's a pretty uh, big size piece of plywood. And it's fantastic. I mean, it's the best night's sleep I've ever had. But anyway, so she likes jumping on the bed. And there's not as much spring. You know, you don't have the worry about launching a kid because of no box spring. And since it being not a traditional mattress. But she loves it, you know. And then she'll do it in her crib, too. <laughs> and 
it, it, it's a, it's a nice little bonding moment for us. But see, I don't know if, if it's a bad thing to teach because you know that you know they always say like kids falling off of beds and uh, like they try to make into trampolines and trampolines are notorious for getting kids hurt. I don't know. I don't really care. We'll, we'll deal with it when it gets there. But the whole opening up doors and drawers and stuff, and we have all the locks and like the stops and those little plastic things, which are such a pain in the ass, you know. And you can't do like 3M sticky tape because that's not going to hold, especially when the kid gets strong. Also, when, when you're um, you know, you're, you're a little tipsy and you want you want a couple of fried eggs at the end of the night, yeah, you're just going to rip that thing off too. So it's annoying because they have to be screwed in. You know, these small little um, half-inch panhead uh, screws, and the, you have to just screw them straight into your cabinets and make holes. And if you don't get the measurements right, which is easy to do because they have, like, slides and stuff, then you have to redrill the holes, and it's such a pain in the ass, and sometimes you don't get to catch enough, and then you have to redo it. it, it it's annoying, right? But... It's better than the alternative because a lot of people in like the lower cabinets, we keep pots and pans. We keep like casserole. Why no? No. Oh. Uh, I almost said casserole. We keep hot dish dishes. Yeah. And that would be bad for the kids to get into. Also, the the dreaded under the sink. I uh, remember as a kid, all of those commercials and PSAs about make sure to lock up your bleach and your Drano and all of your chemicals or your kids will die. I honestly thought as a kid that that's how like half the kids died worldwide or not worldwide, uh, but you know, in the United States, like half the kids just died off because we, we, we drank Clorox or we, we drank uh, some, uh, you know, the, 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 the bottle of the rug doctor carpet solution that you got from two years ago when you shampooed the carpets and it's got one sixteenth of a bottle left but you just never know the next time you're gonna shampoo the carpets and you don't want to throw it away because that seems wasteful yeah yeah and it's honestly how i thought like so many people died but i i, I understand it you know I, I get it but all these bottles now have you know kid proof caps that you have to push down and stand on one leg and then recite the star spangled bangle backwards and they're tough to get into. Or, oh, popping pills? Yeah. See, I, I thought that's how a lot of kids die, too. Just, uh, you know, the pills are out, and they're like, ooh, candy. Because kids are stupid like that. Yeah. And, and then they just eat all of mommy's uh, Percocet. Yeah. And, and then they just tap out. No. Uh, but we, we are a lot more conscious now of what is at, like, her her range oh it's like north korea and their ballistic range like we're wary about like how far they can hit out so when especially on the counter uh since we do a lot of cooking stuff there's usually a, a knife around or the stove will be on and she can she's starting to be able to reach up on the co on the edges of the counter so we're keeping everything sort of tight and in the middle and we're very wary when the stove or oven is on of where she is. And especially when we open the oven. Because yeah, the kid has amazing short area speed. Like, she's she's not overly fast, but she's extremely quick in a phone booth. She's like she's like what you would want in a good middle linebacker. Yeah, Maybe doesn't have the dominating straight-ahead speed, but just has a lot of quickness in between the tackles. Yeah, that's what she does, too. And probably just had one incident where... You know, m making some of the oven, open the door, and, you know, she's 10 feet away. And then I blink, and then she's right there. And, of course, kids, you know, she, they see the light, the warmth, and they oh, they see that daddy's interested in it. So it's like, Daddy, I want to touch, too. It smells like burnt hot dogs. Nah, 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 nah. And here's the whole thing, too. Like, uh, Margaret is a big helper. I mean, she loves getting her hands involved, whether uh, the wife is baking something or if we're, you know, making up some dinner. M Margaret, help. Margaret, help. <laughs> she always talks about herself in the third person, too. Maybe that's something that's something we should talk about. Yeah, maybe I'm just raising a huge narcissist. M Margaret's turn. Margaret, help now. But, yeah, it, it's kind of cool because uh, we picked up these stools. We also have some storage in them. And... Uh, what she does is we're making a dinner, say we're, uh, I don't know, doing up some kebabs or something. And then, you know, we'll cut up the pieces of like green pepper and then you know, I'll just let her 
I'll, I'll just give her a small pile, and then she rearranges them, and she thinks that she's helping. Yeah, I'm not going to give her a bamboo skewer. I mean, we're, we're not defending the Japanese mainland if the Americans decide to uh, invade instead of dropping um, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but whatever. And, and she feels like she helps, and, and, and it's cool. Uh, but it, you do have to be very wary because you, know, you got the bamboo skewers. you got raw meat up there. You got, I'm sure you got knives up there. Uh, me, um, you're going to have some hot sauces on there. And, man, I, I can't think of anything worse because kids naturally have a pretty dull palate. You know, they think that ketchup is spicy. But, man, I, I can't imagine just getting a uh, – like, you're, you're a curious kid, and you see – you used to drink from a bottle, and you see liquid in a bottle, and you just take a pull off of some uh, mango habanero hot sauce uh, of the month that your dad got. And, ooh, that could ruin spicy food for you for the rest of your life. It really could. Or if you do something um, l- l- like when you're a kid and then you-, you drink too fast or you cough in the middle of it and then it get into like your sinuses where it almost come out your nose and like you know, the back of your, you know, the back of your mouth in that soft area. And it's just like, ah. yeah, that'd be over. But hot sauce of the month club. Let me tell you about uh, also the beer of the month club, the original, the OG craft beer club. Here's what they do. It comes right to your door. Craft breweries around the country, uh, also right in your backyard. I, I got some great brews from uh, Take Three, Mar- uh, the Pride of Marshall, Minnesota. It's fantastic. And handcrafted beer in bottles, in cans. It's just fantastic. E- each shipment, you get 12 world class beers from two different breweries, two different styles from each of them. So you get four beers of each. And. Uh, it's just great. Oh, sorry. Three beers of each. Yeah. Uh, cans are featured three times per year, so you're always getting something new. And also comes with their monthly newsletter, stories behind the brewery. So if you want to follow up on them, you know, maybe you can find your, your brand new favorite brewery. Yeah. They got options for monthly, every other month, or even quarterly. I highly suggest the month because, you know, 12 beers for a month, you know that. They're very, 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 very good. Let's keep it rolling. Let's keep the party going. Huh? Each shipment, always free shipping so go to craftbeer dot uh, craftbeerclub dot com slash dad mode and you get ten bucks off any order of three months or more hit it up craftbeer dot com slash dad mode ten bucks off any order three months or more the original craft craft beer club wow I said that very Asiany the original craft beer club there we go it's been a long week yeah uh also something that Margaret's been up to is um she got a power wheel now it's uh, we got it used from a friend, and it's it, it's an awesome. It's like a you know nice pink, uh, almost rain. It's more of a Jeep. It's not really a Range Rover. Like maybe an an H three, sure, but you know, going through uh, it didn't have the charger with it. So going through and finding like the 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 six volt or the twelve volt uh, blah 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 nickel plated lithium ion battery charger. And man, I gotta tell you. The chargers for these things are medieval. Like they, uh, they look like they come straight from Gitmo. Yeah, in terms of uh, enhanced interrogation procedures. Yeah, because what it is, it, it essentially looks like jumper cables. You know, you got the red and you got the black, the little clippy things. You, you know, uh, like metal looking clothespins. You know, for the layperson, and then it, it plugs into the wall as opposed to you know. Uh, another car battery, but it may as well be. It, it it really may as well be. I may as well just charge this stupid uh, Power Wheels battery from from the van. Yeah, and <laughs> I love the instructions. Charge for eighteen hours. Also, charge in a well ventilated area. Yeah, this is great. This is awesome. Yeah, it, let, let's charge in the garage next to all the oily rags. Yeah, from when you uh, when you stay in the deck. Yeah, let's do that. Let, let's completely burn this mother down. I wonder how many houses have been destroyed by power wheels. Oh, and by the way, these things have some nuts on them. Like, I understand it, uh, you, know, you got a you know, husky seven or eight-year-old because weight plays uh, a, a major factor uh, in, in in racing, <laughs> in vehicles in general, especially ones that are made out of plastic. But the, so those ones, you know, they go pretty slow. Plus, you know, kids are stupid. They'll, they'll, they'll pile up like two or three kids in the car and sure. But when you're Muggsy size, um, maybe like 25 ish pounds and she's got a lead foot. Like once she hits that gas, she does not let it go. It, it boom, it, it zips. It, it's like if you have a, 
it, it, it's like you have a racehorse and you have a 90 pound jockey as opposed to a you know 250 pound dude right you know, one's going to go way faster than the other. So Muggsy is that 90-pound jockey uh, in, in this tenth of a horsepower, just beast of a power wheel. And I'm actually kind of scared. Uh, I, I'm not the, I'm not the, uh, the, the pearl-clutching, hand-wringing type parent, that's for sure. I think that's pretty obvious. But, man, uh, th- this is, a, yeah, I, I'm starting to. I'm trying to. I'm giving her oatmeal every morning and trying to pack on with uh, the, you know, the brown rice and the sweet potato. Let, let's get some weight on you. Let's get some weight on you, baby. Let, let's slow this car down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, also, she's um, in, in a really big princess phase you know, right now, and it, it's not so much of really being into like the Disney princesses, like the Snow Whites. She wasn't a princess, was she? God, I don't even know. Um, Definitely not frozen, which I'm ha- really happy about. And Ashley, for listening in your face, uh, yeah, frozen. I can't do frozen. There's just something about it that annoys me. I, I think it's I, I think it's part the oversaturation, also the let it go by uh, uh, Johnny Manziel's mom, Adina Manziel. Yeah, yeah, th- th- that one was terrible. But I, I'm very, I count myself blessed. Hashtag blessed that Muggsy really likes the movie Moana. Which is a great movie. It's got The Rock. It's got that 15 year old chick named Moana who we've never heard of, but she could be a big star. Uh, the guy from Hamilton, sure. And it, it's basically a play. I mean, there's basically two, uh, two or three main characters, and that's about it. Yeah, the chicken. Yeah. So the she's obsessed with that. She wants to watch it all the time, and I don't mind it because the songs are really good, and it, it, it's a fine background movie. Ooh, plus it's long. Yeah. Which is always uh, a big part, but so she likes all the Moana stuff. She she got um, you know the coconut drum guys, and she's got uh, gosh what else? Oh, you got a microphone for Moana because she loves the saying. Uh, also, Princess Sophia, Sophia. It's either Sophia or Maui, which is you know the the rocks character in Moana. Yeah. Uh, and every time she wears a dress, she's in a really big dress phase right now, which, which is fine because it makes changing diapers extremely easy. Uh, and also, she, she doesn't wrestle getting them on because she actually wants to wear it. Uh, so that's a coup for me. We're going to have to get her some winter dresses. Oh, winter dresses like in Frozen. No, probably not. But uh, it, it's funny because every time she wears a dress or if she sees the wife wearing a dress going to work, it's um, princess, princess dress. Yeah, it's cute. And... Uh, sometimes after I pick her up from childcare, uh, she'll be wearing a, 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 a tiara and like princess dress and like those, uh, they literally have like glass slippers at the childcare place. So we, we may be going through a princess phase, yeah, which is fine. You know, she is my little princess and I know that all phases are phases. Uh, if this was, if we did extreme makeover home edition, if that was still a thing, it'd be like, wow, hey, Margaret, hey, you're two years old and you love princesses. Well, we, we hooked you up with a scholarship to the Princess College and we'll, we, we built you this magical castle inside your room, princesses. And then she'll turn five and then be like, this is really stupid. I, except it'll cost, ten, <coughs> it'll cost 10 grand to redo this room. Yeah. Maybe that's why that show went off the air. Because it was just... Complete over-the-top masturbatory network television just filth. Yeah, it, it really was. And I, anyways, um, yeah. Oh, also, speaking of childcare, so childcare is at the gym, and you know this bugged me today since um, I usually work on the afternoon, but uh, since we're having an afternoon adventure, I worked on the morning today, uh, and dropped Muggsy off, picked her up, and in the morning they're like all of the suburban soccer moms and their Aiden Jaden Cadens are just floating around and I just had like an incident not really an incident but whatever so the the exit uh is separate from the entrance so it's only one way out and the exit is adjacent to like the little you know coffee cafe juice bar blah 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 area right and as me and Muggs were walking out and, you know, kind of in a hurry, we're, we're trying to make time here, right? And because I'm always in a hurry. And then, like, this pack of three soccer moms with, like, eight kids between them, you know, they're, they're sipping their, their iced coffee drinks just, like, slowly come. It, it's like the haze rolling in. 
Because if you're a parent with kids, you don't you have the freedom to merge whenever you want, as slow as you want, and they're just like, bah, da, da. so they're slow taking steps, they're slowing us up. We can't get around them because it's a it's a narrow corridor, and they're taking up the whole thing. Because oh yeah, if you have a group of three or more people, and you walk shoulder to shoulder, yeah, you should just leave the country. You should be deported. Yeah, you should be gone. Uh, and then of course they stop right in the middle of this narrow corridor and. One of them pulls up something on Pinterest. I, I, I crap you not. No, just pulling something on Pinterest. Uh, I, I could see it on the phone because, of course, she had the phone that's the size of a tablet. Yeah, and it was something with, like, uh, a wall shelf made with, uh, like, uh, plumber's piping, which is all the rage now. And you could build it for about $27, but or you could buy it on Amazon for 300 Yeah, one of those things. And they just stopped, and all three of them just gawked at it. And their stupid jabroni kids were all just screaming, yelling, and milling about. And then uh, eventually I was just like, uh, excuse me. It, 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 I don't think it had any attitude in the tone, although I'm sure it might have from their perspective. And then so they so that part of the way is like the Red Sea. And I'm sure they thought that I was an a-hole. Yeah, I was the a-hole because I was not... Um, uh, because I, I just wanted to get through and get on with my day as opposed to I have another six hours to kill, but really three to kill before I'm 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 ass deep in a bottle of Chardonnay. Yeah, just trying to kill kill the feelings. Yeah, because yeah, with my six kids and my suburban McMansion. Yeah, it's, I'm just going to block this corridor for everyone so I can stare at someone from Pinterest. How could, could you be more basic? Honestly. Anyways, what were we talking about? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're out of here. Uh, dadmodepod.com slash Amazon. Uh, best way to support the show. Bookmark. Bookmark it. Yeah, and buy that $300 uh, piece of crap that you could you could make for 27 Yeah, do it. Uh, tell a friend. Spread the word. The show's available on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. And, um, yeah, follow me on Twitter at Andy Carlson Show. Dadmodepod.com. But until next but until next time, be a man, be a father, go dad mode. We'll smell you later. Think the episode you just heard is worth a dollar? Well, send it our way. Visit dadmodepod.com slash support to find out how. Be a man, be a father. Go dad mode. The music is created and produced by Deeb. To hear more of his tracks, visit soundcloud.com slash Deeb.